I'm telling y'all, when that plane landed in South Carolina for basic training, I was crying like a little bitch. What's up my people? Thank you again for clicking on this video to watch. Now as you can tell by the title, this is a military related video so I know I've had lots of military related questions you guys are always asking so I'm excited to put this video out there for you guys maybe it'll help some of your questions and maybe you'll learn a little something about me as well along the way this is also a very special video to me not only because it's military related and it's feeding you guys what you want but it's a collab yes this is a collab I'm really really excited so yeah, I'll just tell you a little bit about her first. I'm collabing with Leslie Latrice. She is here on YouTube. Definitely check out the description bar below for all of her information. But yeah, so she is a YouTuber. She's in the military. She's actually an officer in the military. For you, for those of you who don't know, I'm enlisted. So um, she's an officer in the military or in the army. She just started YouTubing. She's way more consistent than me. She's very funny. She has these car chronicles where she's like ranting and and just going ham sometimes. And then at the time, she's just really cool. She also deals with like makeup and beauty. She does hauls. She does lot, lots of makeup. She's a very, very beautiful girl. She recently started getting into vlogging too. So just, take, just, 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 just go to her channel and check her out. She is authentic, she is beautiful, and I'm sure she can help you guys out with any more military related stuff. So go check out her video for this collab on this topic right here, our army journey mine is enlisted and hers is an officer which i would suggest hers for sure by the way if you're here i thank you but definitely go check hers because i would always recommend someone be an officer over enlisted this enlisted shit i'm about to get into it with y'all so let's just go ahead and hop right into this video and then when you're done here then you can go over there let's do the trace all right so one why did i join um i joined the army the texas army national guard um in march of 2008 and it was the best thing that's ever happened to me. Let me just put it like that. But I joined originally because of college, college benef uh, education benefits that the, the Army has and a lot of other military branches have as well. Not a lot of other, all other military branches have education benefits. However, I chose the Army because it was the one branch that I had actually experienced before because my mom was in the military for one tour, one, one contract, and then Two, it was one, uh, it was the branch that I felt there was like no real divide. I felt like everyone was welcome. I feel like in the Marines, you're, if you're badass, don't, that's all they want in the Marines are badasses. I feel like in the Navy, they just want a whole bunch of coochies running around because the Navy is crazy. And in the Air Force, they just want a whole bunch of geeks. I feel like you can be yourself in the Army and you're gonna get, you're gonna be welcomed in and you're gonna be doing something or you can do something that you like to do. And they welcome, they welcome this family of diversity. And I, I love, I love the army. You will not see this much diversity in any other branch, mainly because they're all smaller branches than us, but you won't see this diversity in any other branch. Like I have yet to see it, especially with the, the camaraderie amongst um, soldiers and leaders and enlisted and officers. like. I've never seen this much in my life. I deployed with uh, a joint command, so I worked with Navy, Marines, and Air Force, and there's, I'm telling you right now, as far as camaraderie and just support and just the morale staying high, the Army side is where it's at. I'm, there's so much negativity in most other organizations, and not to talk down on any other organization, there's just a lot of negativity in other organizations except for the air force i feel like the marines and the navy they just have something going on with them that i can't even rock with so that's why i joined for education benefits and because i felt like that was the army was more fitting for my personality so job choices i remember i know this was almost nine years ago when i joined but i know that um, most people have to go into meps to take their asvab well i took my asvab the 11th my 11th grade year the ASVAB and I basically just cheated off the girl next to me. I wasn't taking it with serious intentions of joining the military. I just took it because they told you that this test would pretty much gauge what occupation you would have and what you'd be good at. And it really just got me out of class. So I really didn't take it for that reason to find out what I want to do with my life because I, I still don't know. 
Um, but I took it because I was gonna get out of class early. And so if I just hurried up and take took it, then I can get out of class. It was really bad. So when I did speak to a recruiter the following year and I asked him, hey, I need to take my ASVAB again because I didn't take it seriously. He was like, no, 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 your score is good. Um, we're gonna stick with this because then you could get a lower score and we always have to take the most recent ASVAB. And I was like, I right, whatever. So when I go to MEPS and I choose my job, I, originally I wanted to be a military police an MP and I could not do that because um, I didn't have a driver's license. Yes, I know, do not, do not come for me. I just didn't have a driver's license. I'm from small country town, Texas. I didn't need one. I go to, I go to the MEPS, I'm talking to, not the recruiter, but there's this like civilian man that's like doing, writing up my contract and putting everything in it. And he was like, wait, you qualify for this. And as if I was dumb and I was like, what is it? Oh, let me, let me just make sure you qualify. And apparently it was um, 25 Bravo, which is information technology specialist. And I told him, no, um, I don't do computers. All I know is how to do my MySpace profile and how to make it all cool and make music play and shit. I don't know how to do all that. And he was just like, no, they'll teach you. It's a 21 week course in Georgia. Plus there's a $20,000 bonus. $20,000, how? How are we gonna break this up? <laughs> Give me 10,000 in fifties and another 10,000 in one hundreds. I got sold this dream of IT is what you wanna do because when you get out the military, you can always use this in the civilian world and it's international guards, this is perfect. When you come home from IT, you can get a job in IT and da 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 And I was like, all right, I'm doing it. Now the process through MEPS, before even all that contract signing, you have to like go through this freaking invasive ass physical. I mean, you're walking like a duck, but naked. They're filling all on your boobs, all in your ovaries, checking your ears. That's the first time I ever had my ears cleaned, like professionally or whatever, was at MEPS because I had like a huge lodge of freaking earwax. And when I tell you they put that warm saline or whatever in it, and they just sucked it all up out and you just seen it coming out, it was disgusting but it felt so good. But yeah, if you can't handle like being naked in a group of people, in front of a group of strangers, then you might want to reconsider signing your life away. Cause you're going to be naked a lot of times. Like you're a freaking Jew going through a concentration camp. Now that is not a good comparison, but I'm just saying when you get to basic, you'll understand why, why I'm saying this. If you, if you do go through this, a concentration camp without the death, and you eat a lot more too, but you have to eat it really, really fast. But anyways, that's how I chose, that's how I chose my job. So I walk out, I sign my life away, you know what I'm saying? I signed my life away at 17. My parents, they signed off on all the paperwork and I was good to go. They signed me away like they didn't even care. Let me tell y'all, my parents signed me over to the government as if they were giving me up for adoption. That's how, that was the criteria to join for me. I had lumps in my breast, fibroids pretty much. So I had to get a waiver for that. I got two waivers to get in. I got a waiver for that. And then I also got a waiver for being underweight. I was 97 pounds when I joined. I needed to weigh 105 pounds and I just couldn't gain that weight. So I got a, wait for, I got a waiver for being underweight. So next, I'm gonna talk about my experience from basic training in AIT, basic combat training. I had never been away from Texas for that long amount of time. So it was definitely a culture shock for me. Not only that, being away from Texas, but also being in basic combat training. Turning myself from a civilian to a killing machine, a soldier, it was stressful. Thinking about this is what I'm about to do with my life for the next two months, 10 weeks actually. I'm telling y'all when I landed off, when I landed the plane, when the plane touched down, bawling, crying, like I could not believe I had signed myself up for this and now I'm in a whole nother state. I can't turn back now. I gotta go through two and a half months of torture and I'm just crying, 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 crying. We get there, we get on the bus, you know, they yell at you, they do all this stuff. Blah, blah, blah. I had packed in extremely too much. I had packed heavy one. I packed so much stuff. I was one of those people that packed too much stuff in basic training to take to basic training. And it was horrible. I do remember that, even though this was a long ass time ago, I do remember that I packed way too much. They, they made us go through all of our stuff, do an inventory of all of our stuff, and we had to lock up what they wouldn't let us keep. I just bought like sports bras, but because they were like, I bought the package from Walmart that was like red, black, and white, they wouldn't let me keep the red one. I could only have black or white. 
So I had like bought all new underwear. I had bought all new stuff and most of that stuff I couldn't even keep. Like I had running shoes. They had a little bit of pink in them and they made me get the, you know, they made me get rid of those. I think they were like Nike shocks. Day two, I want to say we hadn't gotten any sleep. We didn't get real sleep until day three or four. So when I tell y'all we had to like, when we get to reception, you're going to be there for like a week or so. And it's just doing like in processing, going through medical, going through everything that you went through at MEPS again and some more. Cause you get your dog tagged, you get your CIF, all your uniforms issued to you, shit like that, right? I had never been so sleepy in my life. So I was just ready to get some fucking sleep. I'm thinking we're gonna get there and we're gonna sleep. No, we get there and we go straight into in process, processing. Y'all, reception was a bitch. So I remember one time we got released and this was the second breakdown I had. I had a breakdown when I landed and then this is the second breakdown I had when I was in reception. After that, I was good. I just had to cry it all out and get all the emotions and stress and anxiety out of my system. So that's what I had to do. I had to cry it out. I don't think I've ever broke down like that ever again in my life since then. <laughs> that's how stressed I was. I didn't know how to handle it. So we got released to go to our rooms and go to sleep. I lay down, I go to sleep. Yo, why two hours late? I don't even think we got two hours of sleep in. They're waking us up, it's like three or four o'clock in the morning. They're waking us up to get up, to go do more shit. Yo, when I tell you I freak the fuck out, like, huh, 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 what, did I do? what am I doing here? What did I sign up for? Like I was tripping out, but it wasn't a big deal. Like people weren't coming, swarming to me, like what's wrong with her, is she okay? Like I think it was more of a, an inside my bunk deal. Like it was, all the anxiety was getting released in my bunk. It was not spilling over into anyone else's. But that was basically my basic training experience. Like reception sucked. Once I got to my company and my drill sergeants, my drill sergeants were all like infantry combat arms. One of my drill sergeants, it was his first rotation. He, was, he had been an infantry drill sergeant, but this was his first rotation with females. So he like treated us like shit into the last two weeks. Like he was cool as fuck. Drill Sergeant Barrera. Shout out to you, man. I have him on Facebook and he's probably gonna watch this. Hopefully he watches this, that'd be cool. I called him Drill Sergeant Baby Joker because he was from SoCal and he had this like low rider truck. I don't know if it's a low rider truck, but it was a very low truck. And he would pull up listening to Tupac to formation and sh or to PT formation and shit. Like Drill Sergeant Baby Joker. And he looked like Baby Joker from, what is it, Friday after next or next Friday. And our platoon was the only platoon to be no names because Drill Sergeant Rosa was like, this shit fucking gay. That shit is fucking gay. You gonna be no names. But his English was so fucking broken. It was hilarious. But he was legit. I loved my drill sergeant. Basic training, I was just really funny and like low key. Like I really tried to just go with the flow. I wasn't trying to be hula hula. I wasn't trying to be no leader, no squad leader, no none of that. I just wanted to get through. And that's just what I did. I just got, I just did what I had to do to get through that <laughs> Graduate, basic training, it's awesome. Um, I talked to a couple drill sergeants that were 25 series themselves and were going, had gone to Fort Gordon for IIT. They were like, yo, it's about to be college now for you. Because the way I think of it, basic training is like your parents raising you, creating you to be an active member of society, in this case, an active member of the Army, um, the United States Army organization, basically. So they're building you up, they're breaking you down to build you up and then you're ready. And then AIT is like college and this is what you're gonna learn to be a productive member of the army basically. Advanced individual training and then basic combat training. These are the two schools that you must go through um, in, in order to enter basic training, but I mean, in order to enter the army. So yeah, like I said, I went to Fort Gordon, Georgia for 21 weeks. When I tell y'all that shit was trying, but it was fun, hallelujah. We had such a good time. Like, it was like we were a permanent party there. Every weekend we was doing something. We was out on Washington Road at the hotels, staying out, spending out, spending the nights. Motherfuckers got pregnant, motherfuckers got married. Motherfuckers did everything in AIT. And this is where it gets real. AIT was the bottom up for real, for real. So my experience was I get there and so I'm in Bravo. Company 449, the Bravo Bulldogs. Tri very tradition here. Like it was, it was more so you have more, at this point you had pride and you completed basic training. Now you're in the army. Now you're here to learn something new. This is when you they build you up. They have like the company mottos, um, the Signal Corps March. Like you know the army song by this time. So it's just like you have a lot of pride in what you're doing. It's an amazing feeling because everybody around you is the same way of all ages, of all walks of life. I think I was in AIT with the 
with a lady that was at least 33 by the time she was in AIT. Like we went to class, every, once we got done with in-processing, we went to class every day. And every week or so, like every class of the entire course was like a couple days to a week long. So you're in this class with this instructor, instructor for this week. You're in this class with this instructor for this week. So um, that was really cool because it was like, you were constantly on the go. And once you passed out of one class, you went to the next and so that was always fun so i i never failed one of those tests one of those classes i know people who did it wasn't a hard uh, a hard course to go through 25 bravo um i never had to study so i guess when they said i tested really well for that even though i didn't take my own test i just cheated it was really easy still you know what i'm saying like i just i just went through the course and just applied everything that they taught me and i'm not good with computers at all i can't even tell you what the difference between a router and a switch is right now i I haven't used my IT stuff in forever. I, I actually hate it. That's me now, but going through it back then, it was fun, it was different. Really appreciate the people that I met in AIT. Like AIT, you will have so much fun and you will meet so many new people, especially if you're at AIT that is long, like 21 weeks or more, or even like, you know, 16, 17 weeks or more. Like that's a lot of time to spend with the same individual so you'll really appreciate the people that you meet in AIT. I hurt my hip in AIT. I was on crutches for like three months in AIT. Ooh, I hooked up with MOST. I met my AIT love and got married to him like two months after we graduated AIT. I was the shit bag in AIT. Let me just tell you my experience. I should have been kicked out of the army in AIT because I was always missing formations. I never followed the rules wrong i had a lot of pride in being a shammer if you don't know what a shammer is it's just a person that can get out of work easily with any kind of excuse they always have excuse they're never to be found I, we're always off doing some dumb shit like the skippers of high school basically so that's what i was it was called i was called a shammer for pt formations after i passed my first pt test i would just stop going to pt like i would go to formation get accountability and then when the formation is walking this way i'm walking that way i think everybody's out of the army now that the group that i hung out with they're all out the small group that I was shamming with, not the group of people that I met, but the group that I used to sham with, they're all out of the military now. So that says something right there. Like I was just hanging around people who didn't see themselves long-term in the military. I really missed that time in my life. Like AIT was such a blast, such a blast. Like it was like college, man. And um, if you ever get a chance to go through it, I know it's not the same. I just met somebody that went there, told me that it's super strict. They can't stay off post, they can't get a hotel. Like. We turn for Gordon Washington Road out. Anyway, so that's what I have on advanced individual training, my experience. And I was a PFC going through all of this, private first class. All right, so we're almost done with this video. I have one more topic to talk about and then we'll be done. Um, make sure y'all check out Leslie Latrice's freaking YouTube channel and her video on the same topic, her officer journey. And this is my enlisted journey, okay? So this last topic is just what would I recommend what I recommend going officer enlisted so overall your overall goal I would recommend become an officer however I would totally recommend going the enlisted route first learning what NCOs do how they are the backbone of the army learning what NCO business is learning how the army works and how the NCOs really keep this shit together enlisted you don't even have to make it to become an NCO you can just be enlisted up to, to specialists and then I would suggest to go officer as an officer if you're prior enlisted yo you will be respected so much more like that's just how enlisted feel we respect you a lot more because you know where we're coming from you've been there before and you're not coming in fresh from the civilian world with the degree and some 12 weeks of school thinking that you're hot shit because you have this rank on your chest and everybody has to salute you. No. And thinking that you know everything. So that's one thing that we always complain about on the enlisted side is these officers that come in straight out of college that don't know what the fuck is going on but like walk around like not trying to take any advice, not trying to be mentored by any um, NCO. And not all officers like that, but that's just the generalization that we get from those officers. I'm not sure if Leslie is that type of officer or not. So you'll definitely have to check out her video on her experience as an officer and what she had to go through. I'm gonna check it out too because I haven't seen it yet either, but I'll definitely leave the link down below. But yes, I would suggest that your overall goal be to become a commissioned officer. But first, I would definitely say go through the en enlisted cha channel first. And there are plenty of ways you can do that. You can do that grain of gold, 
you can do that um, through any of the doctoral programs if you finish up your bachelor's and want to go doctoral or you can go through OCS so there are multiple ways you can commission as an officer from the enlisted side without actually having to come straight from college so yeah there goes my experience my enlisted experience my enlisted journey through the military like I said I've almost been in nine years so I've been doing this a while now I really appreciate you guys for watching but definitely make sure that you hit that like button if you'd like to see more of these military related videos and check out please go check out Leslie Latrice's video and her channel and make sure you subscribe to both of our pages and leave a comment if you have any questions or um, leave suggestions on what you would like to see on my channel um, Thank you so, so much for watching, and you guys have a blessed and beautiful day. Bye. I finished.